Hello, I'm Steve, G0KYA, the Norfolk Amateur Radio Club, and we're here today at Caster Lifeboat to take part in International Marconi Day. International Marconi Day is held every year on the Saturday closest to the inventor's birthday, and on this day stations all around the world that have a historical significance with the uh, inventor set up stations so that other amateurs can contact them. And if the amateurs contact more than, I think it's 15, 16 stations, they can get a nice certificate. Now the reason we're at Caister is because in 1906 a station was set up here to contact ships in the North Sea and also um, the Cross Sands Lightship was in the, some treacherous sands just off the coast here. And that station obviously used Morse code and was here until 1929 when it was closed. Now the special event station we're running today has got two stations running, one on 40 metres, 7 megahertz, and one on 20 metres, and we're using a mixture of single sideband and CW to try and emulate the type of uh, conversations and uh, communications they had back there in the 1900s. We're using two antennas, we're using a, a, G, a W5GI dipole for 40 metres, and an NFED half-wave um, vertical for 20 metres. One of the reasons we're using a vertical is the original antenna here was a vertical antenna, um, back in uh, 1906 that was about 175 feet tall. Ours isn't quite that tall, it's only about 10 metres long, but it's an ideal opportunity for us to try and contact stations around the world and help people get their certificate. And so far we've made a contact with about 50 stations and we'll show you what we're doing today and show you some of the uh, contacts we've made. Yeah, Roger Cesari, nice to work you and uh, everything uh, copied 100%. Uh, Many thanks and uh, we'll see you further down. Uh, Sugar Papa 5, Lima X-Ray United. Uh, from Golf Bravo Zero, Charlie, Mike Sierra, good luck. Now the weather hasn't been too kind to us today and we've got Jim Bacon, our local weatherman here, who can explain what's going on with the weather and also the solar conditions today. Hello, I'm Jim Bacon, G3 YLA. I'm a member of the Norfolk Amateur Radio Club and part of the team here at the Caister Lifeboat Station to celebrate the International Marconi Day. We've got several club stations on the air this morning and conditions have, on some of the bands, to say the least, been a bit poor. Well, the LF bands in particular have been reasonably good for us. We've been using one of the so-called mystery antennas. It's a W5GI. It's one that I use myself at home, and it works out surprisingly well on the LF bands. For HF, it's been rather more patchy, and conditions weren't very good earlier on. They are picking up a little bit now, and Steve G0KYA has recently changed over antennas for the HF and we're now uh, trying a different antenna which seems to be producing better results there as well. And I have recently checked the website uh, DX Maps and uh, that's Gabriel Sampol's website, EA6VQ, a very fine resource for looking at activity on all of the bands pretty much, but it's particularly good for spotting sporadic E events, which is something I'm uh, especially interested in. And 10 metres, I notice, has already started uh, showing signs of activity there. So perhaps HF conditions will give us a bit more cause for cheer later on. Yeah, many thanks David, 7-3. So, Malcolm, G3PDH, you're one of our Morse code operators today. Who have you been working? We're mainly working in Europe, um, British stations, German stations, Sweden, uh, a little bit further over to the east as well. OK. And how much interest has there been in working this? Well, quite a lot of stations are calling in. Um, it's pr pretty continuous, yes. Do you think it's a good band to choose for this event? Yes, 40 metres is the best band, I think, uh, this time of day, certainly. And what antenna are we using? We're using the W5GI antenna. The so-called mystery antenna. The mystery again. antenna, which works very well on 40 metres, actually. Yeah, OK. Now, Malcolm, you're actually an ex-Merchant Navy radio operator, so CW is in your blood, as it were. Yes, that's right. I, I trained on CW in the 1960s, and I was at sea and from about 1963, and, of course, using CW in those days as the main form of communication before they had single sideband on ships. So this must be quite easy for you, really? Uh, I guess so, really, yes. It's a, a main uh, system of operation in those days, anyway. Do you think CW will carry on, or will it eventually die out? No, I think it will, uh, it will carry on. A lot of interest in the amateur uh, area for uh, Morse transmission. Very, the bands are very busy with Morse transmissions. And do you think it uh, works better than sideband? I think it is more effective than single sideband in terms of getting the message through quickly and accurately each time, yes. You don't suffer from the problems of phonetics and the speech 
uh, through probably difficult radio conditions. Okay, Malcolm, thank you very much. Okay. We're very fortunate in Norfolk. Lots of people are interested in amateur radio. We run lots of courses. We meet every Wednesday evening as well, and we run a group for youngsters called Bright Sparks every month. The courses take from foundation through intermediate and to advance. And if you're interested at all, you can find out more details about Am Norfolk Amateur Radio Club by looking at our website at www.norfolkamateurradio.org. I've been mainly working uh, European stations, British, German, Sweden. Uh, sorry. <laughs>